What's good people, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna get straight into it. Scrum Master Scrub number eight. This is the time that I told the team, Scrum rules don't matter. Yes, that's right, I told the team that. Daily Scrum, yeah, sure, you know, do it once or twice a week. Go ahead and when you do do it, do it at a different times. It's okay if you don't wanna create working software, go ahead and, you know, demonstrate stuff that's in test. And things like letting a developer think it's completely okay to be the developer and the product owner. Before I get into this, I want to give you my understanding of how I see Scrum as a metaphor, because I think metaphors do a better job of communicating definition of words. Framework. When I think of Scrum, I think of Scrum as like a lightweight structure that provides shape and direction for a team to grow. The same way that scaffolding provides structure to a building. If we were to extend that metaphor a little bit, look, I'm not a civil engineer, so I don't know it well enough to do this properly, but scaffolding is, um, I guess, made out of steel or aluminium. It comes in poles and, and tubes, and you assemble these things together, providing some sort of shape or structure to the thing that's gonna be growing inside of it. If you were to start removing some of these elements, let's call these elements, and you take these away from the structure, then you may break it. The elements in Scrum we're talking about could be the artifacts, the roles, and the events. So if you start rearranging and moving these elements around in different ways, in the way that they were not intended when Scrum was put together as a framework, you may not get the results that you expect and you may not get the power of Scrum. This video is not about saying Scrum is the only way of working and is the silver bullet. What the essence here is about is that if you're going to use a framework, if you're going to, say, play a sport, there are rules to a certain game. Just like it says on the front of the Scrum Guide, the rules of the game. If you don't stick to those rules, you will not be playing that game. Anyhow, I joined, t I joined this team and the team I begin to understand, we're going way, way back now. I'm beginning to understand that they have adapted Scrum in their own way. And when I've, when I've come in and joined, I've sensed very early on that they want to do things how they believe works. And what I started to do was I placed my rapport with two or three of the, you know, influential developers ahead of really speaking honestly about what I thought. So I had some fear there. I thought, oh gosh, if I start saying, actually, these are the rules of Scrum and these are the things that need to happen, these are the inputs and these are the outputs and these are why the roles are separate in these ways, I'm gonna cross, come across as being dogmatic, my rapport is gonna be affected, they're not gonna like me, so on and so forth. So these, these insecurities, 2009, 2010, were, were definitely piping up and I'm sure taking out a mortgage in that time in my life had a lot to do with it as well. Just, just keeping it real with you. So anyway, what happened? So we got to this kind of place whereby the team were sometimes doing the daily scrum, sometimes they weren't doing it. Sometimes in the, say, sprint review, we had the stakeholders there, the product owner there, and sometimes they weren't there. Sometimes we had working software, other times we didn't. Sometimes we would shrink the length of the sprint or sometimes we'd make it longer to fit in our work. Eventually, what that turned into was big, big problems. So there was the lack of working software that didn't get integrated at the end of every two weeks, which got integrated after, say, three or four months. Of course, when it did get integrated, a big combustion, a huge amount of things were coming out and the team's ability to respond to fix things wasn't very good. When we weren't doing a daily scrum on a regular basis, information would go missing, there'd be misunderstandings, risk would climb and that would really affect our sprint goal. When we had a developer who was playing the product owner role because the product owner wasn't available and the developer decided to become the proxy and I was like, okay, we can try that out, you know, we want to be agile. The effect of that was that developer um, becoming so commercially focused, so keen on delivering, it started to affect the, the quality and the sustainability of the team's tempo. What I'm getting at is, I was not bending some of the scrum rules, I was proactively breaking the scrum rules with a team who were trying to use scrum. And the net result of this was, of course, the team suffered. And the perception was, well, Scrum doesn't work for us. It's not very good. And the sad thing about this is that, first of all, we didn't give Scrum a chance to do what it does, to work as a framework, to provide structure and alignment and clarity, to work in an evidence-based way so that we can inspect and adapt, um, so that we can learn fast and be competitive for the business. 
all of these other things came out uh, as, as a big impact of us breaking the rules. Now, Scrum, as I say, Scrum is not the only way to do anything when you're working with teams. There's many ways of doing things. But what I'm getting at is, if you're going to play a, a game of football, and football has a structure, it has a, it has a set of rules, if the ball goes outside of the lines, what happens is the game stops. If you pick up the football in the middle of the field and run with it, you're now breaking that rule. If you want to do that, that's fine, but you're not now playing football, you're probably playing Australian football. So the, the sentiment of, of this clip and the, the mistake that I made was, it was to make it clear to people, if you're going to be using Scrum, Scrum has a certain structure, and here are the, here are the things that you can and can't do. When we stop doing those things, we stop doing Scrum, and that's absolutely fine. But what that does is it stops people from leveraging the power that Scrum provides, which is to work in a very empirical, evidence-based way. And by removing events, by playing with the structure, by removing the scaffolding, the structure changes and it falls down. And now we cannot get the benefit of it. OK, I hope you found that useful. It would be really interesting to hear your stories about how you may have changed and adapted Scrum. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week for another Scrum Master Scrum. Thanks.